Welcome everyone to the HT Story Channel. You follow the new or exciting love story series titled Reborn to Revenge. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Reborn to Revenge. After three years in prison, she was reborn unexpectedly and once the housewife turned into an able woman in the workplace. She took back all the dignity that was once trampled on the soles of others' feet. Faced with the leading cadre in the wheelchair, she laughed and said, Sweetheart do you miss me? Yeah, I want you. Suddenly he rose from his wheelchair and forced her down. When? When? When did your legs heal? Secret. Chapter 1. Reborn. The cold prison door was opened. A woman wearing a prison suit and holding the yellowed file on her hand, behind her was the indifferent voice of the prison guard. After going out, be a good person. Be a good person. She smiled indifferently, and the memory of Jocelyn Turner, the body's owner, gradually emerged in her mind. Jocelyn Turner was born in a famous family in Yanjing. After her father addicted in gambling, her family's fortune declined. At the age of 16, her mother died of illness. In less than three years, his father remarried and brought back a younger sister. Since then, her status in this family had plummeted. The stepmother bullied her at home, and her sister even took away her beloved boyfriend. She managed hard to endure till 22 years old. In order to consolidate Turner family's status in Yanjing, her father did not hesitate to marry her to Arthur Morrison, a disabled son of the aristocratic family Morrison. Arthur had an accident in a drill and caused a half-length disability. He might not be able to take care of himself in the rest of his life. Her status in the family was humble and she was treated with cold attitude. In the end, she was convicted of the accidental murder and was sentenced to three years in prison. The past three years was broadcasting in her mind vividly, as if it happened yesterday. Sitting in a taxi and looking out at the scenery outside the window, she put her slim fingers on the knees, and grabbed the corner her clothes. Jocelyn's whole life seemed to be constantly being oppressed and kept on pleading, so in the most desperate moment in the jail, she chose to end her life and thus regenerate her soul. She had all the memory of Jocelyn's miserable experience. After driving for more than half an hour, the taxi finally slowly entered a low-rise three-story building on the mountainside. She took out the only piece of money from her pocket and thanked the driver and walked to the door of the villa. She pressed the doorbell. Jocelyn Turner. The servant who opened the door saw her and suddenly stunned. Then she changed her words. Oh no, you a young hostess? Young hostess is back. Jocelyn had left for total three years, while no one cared about her in that three years. Even though the family Morrison was powerful enough to save her out, they did nothing. They hate her, even wishing that she died in the jail. So when the maid suddenly saw her, she was shocked. But the maid quickly took out the slippers from the porch and placed them at her feet. Wait. Before Jocelyn put her one. A bath. It was messy and dirty. They treated her directly as a servant. She sneered, but she was too lazy to haggle over. So she put down the slippers. Okay, mum. After that, she turned around and left with the servant. The lady stunned for a moment, feeling much incredible about Jocelyn's behavior, especially her last word mom, which was particularly harsh in her ears. Jocelyn once called her auntie. This was the first time she called her mum. She felt that this woman seemed to be somewhat different after three years. But she couldn't tell where was different, after all, the appearance was still the same. Chapter 2. The Harassment from Nicola Morrison After a bath, Jocelyn put on a clean dress and went back to the villa. There was nobody in the huge living room. Even Selena Alger was not there. Joan explained. Well, young hostess. There is a maneuver in the military district. Master took Madam and Miss. Morrison there. As for the third young master, I do not know where he had gone. Jocelyn frowned. 
What about the young master? He was her nominal husband, the eldest son of the Morrisons, the man destined to spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. Young master. I have not seen him. Today. Joan said honestly. Yes. I see. She climbed the spiral stairs to the second floor, found the bedroom of Jocelyn and Arthur according to her memory and knocked twice. There was nobody to answer her. So she pushed the door. If Arthur was in the bedroom, he would have said coldly, get out. This meant that he was not in the room. Somehow, she relaxed, not as nervous as before. She frowned, couldn't help wondering if the body's owner was really so afraid of her nominal husband. Before she could completely open the door, suddenly, a black figure flashed behind her, slammed the door and she was pushed against the wall and trapped by a strong force. Jocelyn's mind was suddenly blank. Let me go. Who are you? She struggled fiercely. But the body was pressed tightly. She tried her best to turn around but only saw a black shadow. The man behind her clung to her back and clasped her hands, while the other hand traveled across her body, from her lips to neck, which made her shiver. Who am I? Did my sister-in-law forget me so soon? Then he had been silent for two seconds, with an evil smile mixed in his tone. And he slightly bent his body, with the tip of his tongue licking along the arc of Jocelyn's ear. Just three years. You need me to help you recall what happened. The sound was like coming up from the hell, which made her feel cold. Her wrist was clamped. She could feel the pain of crushing her bones when she tried to look back. She almost blurted out and asked, Nicola Morrison, is that you? In her memory, Nicola Morrison was the most cynical young master in the Morrisons. He almost had different women every day, which was as fast as he changed his clothes. Once a woman with a big belly came to say she had Nicola's child. But he relied on Mr. Morrison's favor to do whatever he liked. Three years ago, he even wanted to possess her. Jocelyn hit his head with a bottle that time. Their child. But he relied on Mr. Morrison's favor to do whatever he liked. Three years ago, he even wanted to possess her. Jocelyn hit his head with a bottle that time. Then he let her go. But it was happening again. Yes, I know my sister-in-law got out of jail today. So I came back early. Nicola spoke fast with her evil look. He approached her body closer and closer. It has been three years since you got married, but have you ever had sex with my brother? Have my brother ever touched you? I remember you were sleeping in separate rooms on your wedding day. My brother is paralyzed so he maybe also couldn't have sex with you. Why do not let me do it and I will take good care of you? Right. Well. You can promise that? You can promise me that no one will bully me. Her head was a little dizzy. Her. Voice was fawning but her body still resisted him. Jocelyn would have tried her best to keep herself clean, but it was she that owned this body. She knew better than Jocelyn that false obedience was more effective than resistance. As she expected, Nicola thought she almost gave in and the power to restrain her was not that strong now. He had a handsome face and an evil smile, the whole body was filled with a slight smell of wine. Of course. At least I will not leave you in prison for three years and even didn't care about you. Who can be crueler than my elder brother? Right. Come on, I have been thinking about you for three years. Let me kiss you. Nicola said and held her quickly to the side of the bed. And he boldly threw himself over her. Wait. Wait a moment. She withstood his approaching chest with her fingers and tried to stop him. What's wrong? Nicola was getting impatient. Chapter 3. Here appeared Arthur. I'm not convenient because I'm in my period. She refused. She was really in her period. She just found that during the shower. Nicola did not believe it. He stared at her suspiciously, feeling obviously that this was an excuse. Really? Nicola pressed his lips with his emotions hidden. 
Sure. She looked serious. After a moment's silence, he smiled with a great interest. Jocelyn, my sister-in-law, after three years, you are still innocent and lovely as before. Do you think I am such easily cheated? Jocelyn was speechless, so he thought she was lying to him. You are getting smarter. Nicola's fingers hang around her collarbone. From top to bottom, her fingertips gently walk down her belly, feeling the tension of her body. Would this man... What a indecent man he was. Jocelyn glared at him closely realizing that his hand was already moving towards her private parts, hearing his magnetic voice speak. I'll check. She was stiff all over, and her underwear seemed to have been taken by his fingers. At the critical time, there suddenly came the very clear sound of the wheelchair sliding. She suddenly realized something, while the man who was pressing on her acted much faster. He almost got out of bed in no time and tidied his clothes. It just happened to crash into the eyes of a man in the wheelchair. After seeing the mess in the bedroom, and the man, who was busy with the buttons, and the woman who sat up from the bed, Arthur's face was getting as dark as the ink. What are you doing? His voice was cold, like a person living in an ice house. Hearing his voice simply could make people shudder. A disabled person who lives in a dark world all day long. He can't even go out or see anyone. It's not too bad to say that he's an ice seller. Bro. Brother. You. How can you be here? Nicola stuttered. He knew that Arthur had locked himself in the study for a day and didn't come out, so he dared to enter the master bedroom to harass Jocelyn. This is my room. Arthur approached him with the wheelchair, and his approaching made her feel the coldness coming from him. While at this time, someone was more afraid than her. Nicola has always been afraid of Arthur. Once Arthur was the head of the military appointed by the old commander. He was vigorous, and has made countless military achievements thus he also won the nickname of, Cold Blood Devil, in the army. But for the accident in the military exercise, Arthur should now have been the famous chief of the entire Yanjing. But even if he was now disabled, could only move with the wheelchair, the military morale in his bones had not changed. One more time, what are you doing in this room? There was a trace of impatience in Arthur's cold voice. Arthur, it's not what you think. Nicola was making the condition harder to explain. In front of Arthur, he was nothing but a coward. She sneered in her heart. When facing Jocelyn, he was a bully, while facing Arthur, he was nothing. At this time, following the light, Arthur's eyes fell on her delicate face. After several years of prison life, she became thinner and more clavicle. Since he doesn't want to speak you tell me. The man's voice was cold like ice, without a trace of temperature. Jocelyn stunned. I tell you. Did she have anything to say? Chapter 4. Where should she sleep? We have done nothing. She told the truth. Nicola apparently relieved but saw Arthur's face was still angry and gloomy. He said quickly. Yes. Brother. My sister-in-law just got out of prison. I just came by to see her. Come to see her? See her in bed? That was a lame excuse. But if you come later, we have done everything you can imagine. She added calmly. The mood in the bedroom was heavy. Arthur clutched his long fingers on the wheelchair and stared at the calm face of Jocelyn. He did not expect that the woman could tell the truth easily. Nicola's face suddenly turned pale and almost jumped up. What are you talking about? Isn't it? Didn't you just say your brother has been paralyzed so you should do it for him? And you said that as long as I let you do, you will treat me well. It is only a few minutes ago, do you regret now? Jocelyn showed him a face of grievances and deliberately accentuated the word, paralyze, which undoubtedly made the situation even worse. You. You. Dot you. Nicola Stangen, as if he was afraid that he would swallow him alive. He had no idea that Jocelyn Turner, a gentler and virtuous woman, 
would directly confess to an affair in the presence of Arthur. This Jocelyn Turner who just released from prison, was a total psycho. My brother, I. Nicola even wanted to cry. I admit that I did, but I know that sister-in-law isn't in that physical condition. So we didn't. She had never seen that someone voluntarily confessed anything so quickly. She knew at once that Nicola was a bully, who just dared to bully someone weak. He saw her timid. That was why he chose Jocelyn. It was such a waste that he had a handsome face. But she thought this would bring her a lot of fun for her later life. Get out of here. Arthur slid in a wheelchair, suppressing anger in his voice. It sounded like it was coming from the hell. Even her spine could feel cold. No wonder Jocelyn was so afraid of her husband. It felt like this man was a bomb which would explode at any moment, and when he got angry, he could kill anyone he wanted to kill at any moment. Nicola gave Jocelyn a fierce stare and swore to himself that he wouldn't let her go easily next time. But in the presence of Arthur, he was so afraid that he couldn't say a word. He stumbled and almost crawled to leave the room. There were only two people in the bedroom, she and Arthur. A terrible silence was filled in the room. I. That. She strangely stuttered. In front of this crippled master, her heart was beating so fast. Jocelyn Turner, why are you so nervous? Hey, long time no see. After a long hesitation, she blurted out this opening. She suddenly felt like biting her tongue to kill herself. Arthur was silent, staring at her coldly. She just felt a gust of cold wind blowing. Why he still ignored her? Well, it is sunny outside. How about I take you out to feel the sunshine? It seemed that this was something Jocelyn always longed for. But just as her hand touched his wheelchair, he suddenly raised his hand and grasped her wrist so tightly. And he pulled her. Then his thick palm caught her by the neck. Pain and the extreme oxygen deprivation made Jocelyn's face turn purple suddenly. Chapter 5 Her Pre-existence Joanne Leonard Cough. She tried to open his fingers with both hands, but she was weaker than Arthur who was the military, let. Let me go. Every word from Arthur seemed to come out of the teeth. Who gave you the courage? What the hell? What are you talking about? I don't. I don't understand. Oh. You failed to seduce me, and you are afraid that your status will not be guaranteed, so you are going to start from Nicola. She stunned, and then she complained secretly. Seriously? Jocelyn, what did you do? Did you also seduce Arthur? Even if you were unwilling to be lonely, you would not be able to seduce a person who was paraplegia. Was Jocelyn's inner heart love Arthur? You quickly let me go, I am dying. I am dying. She was really uncomfortable, and she had to shed tears in her eyes, she hit his arm continuously. Seeing that she really couldn't breathe, Arthur loosened his hand. Jocelyn was almost dying, and the whole body fell softly on the ground, touching the clear finger marks on her neck. Cough. Damn it. He was going to kill her. Should the soldiers be so rude? Get out of here. Arthur sat in a wheelchair, his voice suppressed his anger, and he looked at her in a wheelchair. Let go what happened just now. But she touched her neck that was almost broken, and Jocelyn didn't say anything. Okay. Got up from the ground, propped the body and walked out of the bedroom, closing the door. When she closed the door, she suddenly understood. With Arthur's cold and arrogant personality, even if his wife and his younger brother were derailed, how can they spread it outside? Would it be a slap in the face? But then she reacted again. He drove her out of the bedroom. Where should she sleep? Damn it. Looked around, there was another room next to Arthur's bedroom. Jocelyn opened the door of the bedroom, it's very simple layout, there is a small bed, a wardrobe, and a bathroom. Forget it, just slept here, it's better than being killed by the disabled. At night, breezy, she was covered with a thin blanket, 
but she did not sleep well, and many pictures appeared in her mind. A black Rolls Royce was crushed by a large truck rushing out of the corner. In the midst of the fire, the medical staff carried out two charred bodies. They were her father and mother. The newspaper headline read, At 5 o'clock in the morning, a major traffic accident occurred in the suburbs of Yanjing. The popular business celebrity Jason Leonard and his wife were killed in a car accident. The young lady of the Leonard group Joanne Leonard was missing yesterday and her whereabouts were still unknown. Her fiancé Stan Judd was under investigation at the police station and offered a $5 million bonus to find the whereabouts of his fiancé. Stan Judd. These two words, like a dagger, were deeply carved her heart. Joanne Leonard was her pre-existence, and Stan Judd was the one she had loved dearly. But in the end, what she exchanged was his betrayal, and he even hoped that their family of three would die in a car accident. On that day, several strongmen chased her behind her, trying to kill her, and she didn't know until the moment she jumped into the sea that it was Stan Judd's instructions and planning. He was the one who was most looking forward to her death. <laughs>